Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Good Morning Lovely. My name is Amanda and today we are going to be starting our series called Beauty Basics and today we're going to be talking about the makeup anatomy of the face. So if you have any confusion or just don't quite understand or know how the process of makeup works with application, um, you're new to makeup maybe and you want to get into it but you just don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We're going to be talking about um, from the layering of the face from um, the first thing you put on to the last thing you put on and what the products are in a little bit of a dive in in the application. So stay tuned and let's get started. The first step in your face makeup anatomy is primer. And primer is the same concept for your face as it would be if you're painting a wall. It fills in all of the nooks and crannies, in this case the pores on your face, and gives a clean, smooth surface to apply your foundation and concealer and everything else. It also is helpful to provide a base for your makeup that will hold on to it and make it last longer. So the next step in your makeup anatomy is foundation, and foundation comes in a wide array of styles. You can go with a liquid foundation, a mineral powder foundation, or a cream to powder type of foundation. So there's a lot of different uh, formats out there of foundation that are better for some people over others depending on your skin type and those sorts of things. You can also use a lot of different tools to apply your foundation. So you can use your fingers. Your fingers are helpful for warming the product for application to help move it on your face better. I personally don't care for using my fingers because they get really dirty. Um, but you can also use your, you can use your fingers. You can also use a brush. Um, brushes are really nice for distribution. The only downside is that depending on the quality of the brush you're using, you can get some streaking going on. Um, Clarisonic also makes a brush head if you have a Clarisonic that you can use for your foundation, um, which is, I have found to be better than using an actual brush. Um, it just takes a little more blending to get rid of those, those brush streaks. So there is also a sponge applicator out on the market. You can get a silicone sponge or a beauty blender. Personally, out of all the options, I like the beauty blender the best. I think it does the best job. Um, my next favorite would be the Clarisonic brush head that you can get, but between the two, the beauty blender is the much more cost-effective option. You can also get uh, knockoff beauty blenders that are actually pretty good if you find out what works for you. I like the AOA Studio Wonder Blender, they call it, um, and that's a dollar. And you can get it from shopmissaa.com. The next step in your makeup anatomy is concealer. The concealer is very interesting because there are a lot of different types. Concealer is simply the idea that you are trying to conceal something, whether that is a dark circle under your eye, different color pigmentation, um, hyperpigmentation or blemishes. So concealer comes in all different colors and the way that it works is that you want to, so like for example you want to conceal dark circles under your eyes which tend to have a purple or blue cast. You can conceal them using a concealer that is the opposite color on the color wheel from the color you're trying to conceal. So in this case with dark under eyes blue and purple, the opposite would be more of an orange or a yellow. So you're going to use that color concealer to conceal your under eye circles. For a blemish, which tends to be more red, you want to go the opposite to something like green or yellow. So after you've got your foundation done, you're going to conceal using the color correcting concealers, blend them out, and then you're going to go back with your foundation and make sure that that's covering it up just to make sure that there is no color differentiation going on there and that everything's even. So concealer should not just automatically be a lighter color of foundation. Um, it really should be color correcting. And the other step of this is concealer can be confused with a brightener, which is a much lighter color than your normal skin that will brighten and make things pop. So for me, 
I get kind of like these bags right here. Not really bags, but it's like more puffy here. So I will take a concealer, a brightening concealer, and I will draw kind of a, oh, like an arrow shape and bring it all the way down so that it gives the illusion that the light is carrying my face all the way down and it's not just sitting in a pocket right underneath my eye. So another type of concealer is a brightening concealer and that might be what you're more used to but it's not actually going to conceal the color correction unless you do a an opposite color on the color wheel from the color you're trying to correct. So once all of your creams, your liquid foundations and concealers are on, you want to set those with a setting powder that is translucent. And this is going to lock in that liquid, those creams, so that they're not smearing or budging. It's also going to help if you have more oily skin to mattify your complexion. The next step is to get in front of a mirror and see how the light falls on your face. Notice where the shadows fall and where the highlights appear. You are going to start contouring and highlighting now. Now go ahead and start contouring by using a darker colored powder or cream and you can put that in the hollows of your cheeks, you can put it on your jawline, also on the border of your forehead and you can contour your nose, the sides, the front. How you contour your nose um, is really up to you and your preferences and the kind of shape and style that you want to give the illusion your, for your nose to have. Again, if you're using a cream contour, cream contour is much more difficult to work with than a powder and you always want to make sure that you set it when you're done with a powder as well, whether that's a translucent powder or if it's with um, bronzing powder. You just want to, you just don't want to overdo it, less is more. Generally speaking, I like to do blush before highlighter. I feel like highlighter can kind of blend it all together. So you may want to move the blush before the highlighter, but the next step is blush and you're just going to take and sweep some color right onto the apples of your cheeks and you can even do it a little bit over your contour here and it just gives a little bit of flush to your face. Highlighting generally goes in your forehead, down your nose, right here on your the tops of your cheekbones, in your cupid's bow above your lip, and also on the front of your chin. You can use just a white brightening concealer. You can use a shimmer. There are so many different highlighting options out there from liquid, again, to powder. So many different types of shading pigments. There's like pink highlighters and more bronzy highlighters and then like super, super blinding highlighters. It's really up to you and your preference. It's really fun to experiment in this area. Um, I love a good highlight. I think a lot of people who are into makeup generally do. They're just fun. And so there's a lot of play that can go, can go on. I generally play up my cheekbones the most and then downplay the rest. So I will just put a little bit of maybe a little bit of shimmer depending on how I'm feeling down the center, but then I really play up here with some shimmer and brighten the rest of my face down in this area, down my nose, my forehead and chin and cupid's bow. And that is a wrap with the face makeup anatomy. Obviously you do not have to do every step in your own makeup routine. This is just every step laid out with all of the different product recommendations and the order in which to apply those products. You can do it with whatever you want to do. Um, this is just a full explanation video. So if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment down below. You can subscribe if you want to see the future makeup anatomy and beauty basics videos. And I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.